Good morning. morning. Welcome to Groton Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. We are an open and affirming congregation. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I have a couple of announcements. Today is Homecoming Sunday slash Celebration Sunday, and please join us after the worship service for some light luncheon and conversation and fellowship. Uh, The youth group will resume meeting on September 20th from 6 to 8 p.m. in the youth room. Uh, On September 25th, an interesting event, (laughs) Theology at the Pub at 4 p.m. at the Game Time Sports Bar located at 577 Route 12 in Groton. Everyone over 21 is welcome. Uh, The crafting group meets on Tuesdays and Fridays from 10 to 12 in the craft room. Everyone is welcome to join, and our nursery is open. So if you have young children um, and would like to, you know, be able to leave them in a safe place, we have a nursery, and it is nice and clean and beautifully reappointed. So please take advantage of that. Um, Community meals is every Saturday from 12 to 12.30 p.m., um, and there's additional here. And the last thing I have is... New members, if you are interested in becoming a member of the Groton Congregational Church and joining our family um, as a member, um, there's great benefits to being a member here. Um, I won't go into all the detail. Um, We're going to have a new members class on September 25th at 11.30 a.m., and we will figure out when the next meeting date will be after that. We will receive new members on October 9th during worship, and if you'd like to join with us, Please speak with Reverend Lee or one of the deacons, and if you're a deacon, please put your hand up so everybody knows who you are. I'm not the only deacon. Come on, Chuck, put your hand up. (laughs) Mary. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. And I'm going to hand this over to our moderator, who has a few words to speak. And as she's coming forward, Rachel is not able to be with us today, and she was going, she's having me ask, if you have any interest in participating in that theology at the pub, we'd like to have a ballpark figure as to who might be going. And if you are considering it, would you raise your hand? Just so that the the pub may know how many of us might be coming. Okay, great. Thank you. And hello, folks. It's good to be back. (laughs) Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, My name is Ingrid Miesemer. If you don't know me by now, I can't understand why you wouldn't. But anyways, um, welcome to everyone here. Welcome to those watching via uh, Facebook and YouTube. Um, We want to see all of you here every Sunday, obviously. Um, We are all a family. Um, Whether you are a member or not, you are part of our family. Um, And as family, we want to know, do you want to help out sometime? We're not going to commit you for years on end. I mean, there are different events coming up that all can use help. Or if maybe you, you're handy with a, a hammer or something, you can help with some of the minor repairs around the church here. We're just looking for people to step up and be more active members of the family. But it's not all work. Um, you've heard about the uh, theology at the pub, which is uh, an open event. It's not just church members that are invited to this. This is open to anybody, anybody over 21, obviously. Um, But bring your friends. Um, Rachel and I attended one of these a few years ago uh, before COVID, and we had such a wonderful time. We had people not only from um, the denomination of the church that was sponsoring it, but we had Quakers, we had other churches and all, And we were able to discuss a lot of things and like how different churches have different faiths and different traditions. Um, So that was always a lot of fun. But we're not just stopping there. We've got some fun things planned for the next few months. October, we have a trivia night, and that is open to everyone, and also everyone even outside the church. Uh, In November, we've got another thing that's going to help us prepare for Christmas. And December, we're talking maybe some Christmas caroling. And we're open for more ideas. We want to do fun things that aren't necessarily a fundraiser. We want to do stuff where we can all get together and be family together. Just like today after church, there's subs out there. We need people to eat them. So come on back, have some subs. 
Um, but the main thing is, we are family. We have to look out for each other and for the church as part of that family. And that's all I ask. Thank you. Just wanted to say it's not too late to buy raffle tickets. I'll be in Dutton Hall. Thanks. Thank you, Ingrid and Kathy. I have one more little piece of business to take care of, if I can find it. Oh, yes. I have a call to meeting. Special meeting of the Groton Congregational Church, Groton, Connecticut, pursuant to Articles 3 of the Bylaws, the voting members of the Groton Congregational Church, Groton, Connecticut, a religious corporation, are hereby notified of a special meeting to be held on Sunday, September 25th, immediately following the worship service in the sanctuary for the following purposes. One, to act upon the recommendation of the Church Council to revise Section 3.01 of the Bylaws to recombine the annual organizational meeting and the annual budget meeting. Two, to act upon any other business proper to come before the said meeting, dated at Groton, Connecticut, this 22nd day of August, by Ingrid Miesemer, moderator. And also, I will note that if you are want to see what the change the bylaws are, the bylaws changes are posted on the Midway Bulletin Board. And now, let us be a people of God together. Please join me in the call to worship. We meet as a family in the presence of our Heavenly Father. We meet as brothers and sisters in Christ, accepting the responsibility that places upon us to love one another as you have loved us. We gather to listen for your voice in the midst of all the busyness of our lives to guide us on our individual and collective journeys in this world. We meet as your life Come, let us give thanks for this day as we worship our God. Please join in our opening hymn, This is a Day of New Beginnings, number 518 in your hymnal. standing. Please join me in the unison prayer of transformation and new life. Source of wholeness, we confess that sometimes our goals don't align with yours and we get lost. At times we have pursued power, 
knowledge, and, and wealth instead of, of you, who are the source of all. We know that you are the balm we need, and we turn ourselves towards you. You are steadfast in your love and justice. Help us to be the same. Help us to be a balm to others as you are to us. Amen. And with those words, and especially the words of that opening hymn, let us hear these words of assurance that the Divine One is steadfast in love, justice, and righteousness. Know that we are called and empowered to do the same. May God's grace free us and lead us lovingly as we live into our ministry this new year. Amen.
We receive our gifts in the gladness we give them. Thank you that we have an abundance of resources to share so that every need is met. May we always give from wide open hearts and may what we give be used to bring a balm of justice. Amen. In your bulletins, on the back of the announcement, you will find a covenant of intentionality. I was not here when this was being offered in 2019, but this was a document that was created by this congregation after a time of challenge and growth. And Sue, if, I don't know if you want to add any a bit of history there. I don't have much, much okay. to add. But the it was an important know. document that was created, calling the members of this congregation into a relationship that was, was priceless because we know that we all come from different paths and different opinions and different perspectives. And on March 10th, 2019, those who were present were able to sign a document which is in Dutton Hall. But we are going to be calling you into sharing this with us. And you may find there are a few other occasions where we will be doing this as well. And this is, I believe, a document that every church should be writing and participating in. And I guess maybe we should have everybody rise and saying it as well. Sorry. So would you please rise? And I'm going to say that those of you who are guests, you can just put the word friends of Groton Congregational Church in there if you would like to join us in the reading of this because it's a, it's a beautiful document for all of us. We, the members of Groton Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, covenant one with another and before God to support one another and to build Christian relationships. We will always listen to the opinions and feelings of all persons, treating each person with respect and decency in all our relationships. Today and in the future, we commit to offering our support, our concerns, and our prayers for discernment in all aspects of our life together. We shall seek and offer forgiveness freely not holding on to alienations, wounds, and past perceptions or transgressions. We shall seek to follow Christ's words, do to others as you would have them do to you. To this covenant, we sign our intentions and affirmations on this day, the 10th day of March, 2019. And thank you all, and please be seated. As we go into this time of children's message, we were hoping there might be a few younger people here to be with us in their spirit. And I'm sorry. But I'm going to speak to the young of heart in each one of us. As we have just read that covenant, we have heard the words that were shared, and again, these are words that I think we should say across our nation right now, should we not? And call everybody into making that covenant. Because we are at a time in history when there are clearly very different opinions being expressed, and sometimes everyone does not have the desire to respect the other voices. One of the pieces I would like to remind you of is a song that we have sung ever since we were little kids, that helps us to remember that even though we have differences, it does not mean that we have to silence the other voices. We all learned that song, This Little Light of Mine. Do you remember it well? And I think Sue is gonna help us play it. But it's, it's a song that says, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, and I'm not gonna let anybody snuff it out. We're in a time when some people wanna snuff out our light if we are trying to do certain things and they disagree. 
And so we're going to be a congregation that says, we just read this covenant. We know we're not going to be the one who participates in trying to snuff out somebody's light, but we're going to try to call one another into listening, which is really hard sometimes, is it not? And not turning around and walking away. And I know it's hard. (laughs) I have to sometimes silence my own mouth in order not to cause a disturbance. And sometimes I have to figure out how do I say the words so that it is done respectfully and the other person is willing to stay in the conversation. It's not always easy, is it? And so I'm inviting you to participate with me as we go into this journey this next year to do that. But I'm going to say, let's sing this little light of mine. Ready? second verse, I'm not going to let anybody snuff it out. <laughs> okay? I'm not, I'm not going to let it snuff it out. I'm going to let it shine. Won't let somebody snuff it out. I'm going to let Do your version. <laughs> not going to let it snuff it out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. And we've got to practice looking for that light in other people as well that sometimes rub us a little bit the wrong way, but help us to learn how to love better. May God bless us as we go forward with that as our invitation this day. And so at this time, I would like to invite you into sharing your love through the prayers for people that have concern and also the joys and giving thanks, and I'm gonna say I do give thanks that I had a safe journey down out to see my sister and my aunt who's 94 and a cousin and another sister, but I also was able to go down to Pennsylvania and do a wedding and see people I've not seen for quite a long time. And it was a very wonderful experience for me for the reconnection. And I do give thanks for Chuck and for Jack for leading the worship services while I was gone and for all of you who are still steadfast and coming to, begin to be a part of the body of Christ here. And so for these occasions, let us all say, thank you, God. Have mercy on us all. Thank you. Amen. And I also want to lift up prayers. Jack Shackles has communicated with me today that he is not feeling well and asks for your prayers. And, and also Lisa's story is recovering from COVID but she's had a really hard bout with it. And so she and her husband have also had it. And so gracious Lord, we pray that you will be with the stories as they do their recovery from COVID. Oh God of grace, our prayers. And for, are are there others who are dealing with COVID that you need to name today? It's it's here, I know. For Catherine dealing with cancer as well as COVID. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Are there any others at this time? Any special prayers? Then let us know. Oh, Doris. For my friend Snell and Paulette, who live in Manitoba, Ontario, and they're having trouble getting to the doctor, and they have to do with that. Okay, so we're lifting up. Prayers for Mel, who was, has terminal cancer, and for Paula, who's caring for them up in Canada, and for Doris as she supports them at this time. As, and we pray for God's grace to come in and, and be with them and support them. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Yes, Ingrid.
rather than shutting them off on another plane to another place. Oh, gracious Lord, we pray for the immigrants first who have fled for their own safety to our country and have now been transferred to Martha's Vineyard. And we give thanks for those at Martha's Vineyard who have received them and cared for them. And may I know that there's more who are arriving in the, on the eastern shorelines uh, and eastern states. And so, gracious Lord, for those who are receiving them, may they find ways to offer them comfort but also provide for their needs as best they can. Gracious Lord, this is a, 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 an important conversation right now for so many. Pour your mercy upon them at this time. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. And I will lift up, go ahead. Okay, prayers for people in Puerto Rico dealing with Hurricane Fiona, and also Alaska where there's been such horrible flooding. For the people who are trying to find their way, O oh God of grace, hear our prayers. And for those who are in England and for the family of Queen Elizabeth, as they move into this new chapter, but also offer their service tomorrow, um, and for their grief. O oh God of grace, hear our prayers. Emily? Emily's lifting up prayers at this time for thankful for the people who have gathered on 9-11 to honor the service people and those who lost their lives during that tragedy at this time and for, for the gifts they gave. O oh God of grace, hear our prayers and Alma. All right. All right, so Alma's daughter and Connie Stoddard have a birthday tomorrow for their, these special occasions. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers, and let us now move into a time of the pastoral prayer. I invite you now into a time of silence to offer your own personal prayers before the collective prayer. The Lord be with you, and let us pray. O merciful and loving God, in the beauty of this day, we give thanks for the freedom that we have to come here and worship together, to create the body of Christ from our many different homes, to lift up these prayers knowing that you have heard them and you will answer them in your time and in your way. We pray for the patience if we have to wait for the answers to our prayers. We pray for the hearts if we have to accept circumstances that are not necessarily those that we wish to go through. But as we move forward into this time of worship, guide us all with your light and your love. 
Help us to sense your presence in the midst of all that is here, for we are going to be taking some steps as a, as a congregation. We're going to be hearing invitations through the words of scripture and hymns and finding ways in which we can offer our contributions to be your servant people in this world at this time in September of 22. For our family members who are in need of, of your, your help and support, we offer our prayers for the love that will sustain them as they go forward. For each one of us as we offer our yes to your call to us to share your love as best we can, even though sometimes it challenges us to the very core of our being. Pour your spirit upon us now as we join our voices together in sharing the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 18 through 19. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. And the second reading from the book of Isaiah, is chapter 40, verse 31. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. May God add his blessing to these words. And then we pick up these words from Paul in the book of Philippians 4, chapter, er, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then in Luke verse, chapter 1, verse 37, for nothing will be impossible with God. Words said to Mary as she heard that prophecy. These are words, may God add a blessing upon them, these are words that I felt were important for us as we go forward this day into gathering again and starting a new chapter as the Groton Congregational Church this year. We are doing so as the body of Christ, coming not only from Groton, but from all the neighboring towns as well. And we are creating what I call the body of Christ to see how we can worship together, but also move into other um, ways to be creative together as we hold up the light for one another. And also for those who are wanting to know where God is present in the world, in, in challenging times, and sometimes wanting to be embraced and feel loved. We were at a meeting on Tuesday night, and Monday night, I guess, and there was a woman who came wanting some support. And there's other times when people have come wanting support, wanting to know where that light was. And so we are holding that light up in many, many different ways, sometimes through a gift of music, sometimes through our presence, sometimes through the community meals and many other ways. And so I'm going to start with a prayer right now 
Let us give thanks for this day in the presence of all those who are here, knowing that some are watching on, on the video because of illness or other, uh, other challenges, and say thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this moment, for empowering us with the gifts we have to serve and love you just as we are. No magic wands, just our beings. Some are here today with broken hearts and some with hearts that have healed, some who are ready to challenge the world and some waiting for encouragement, some wanting a nudge to see where to place their energies and passions. And we pray to you, O oh God, to guide us this day with your light. Help us to sense your presence as we breathe in together and give this thanks. Amen. And so I'm going to start with a sharing to be a little bit playful with you today. I heard a young woman and her father talking about her new passion, which was rock climbing in a special facility. And I asked her, she described some of these things, and you know, I said, well, if your foot slips, are you afraid of falling? And she burst out laughing, and so did he. And she goes, no, because if you fall, you bounce on the floor. I thought, oh. And they have this spongy floor upon which to fall when they're doing this rock climbing. And that has really teased me a little bit. And so I invite you into that teasing and that thought, that wonder. If in your own life right now you didn't have to worry about trying something out and falling, what would you try? Think about it. What would you try? All right, I want you to write that question down for yourself. What would you try if you didn't have to worry about falling or failing? <laughs> okay, I'm glad you're laughing. I was too. We know that Thomas Edison took 100 tries to make a light bulb. He admitted that he failed 99 times, and he used that word. He failed 99 times. What would have happened if he'd given up after the 75th failure? I guess somebody else would have figured it out. Would we have the same result? I don't know. But I now invite you to think about, if you didn't have to worry about failing, what would you try? As I pondered some of the stories for today about what Jesus was doing on this earth, I began to really interact those thoughts. He was trying to help people overcome their senses of failure and worthlessness for having made mistakes in their lives and being judged for it or shamed for it or not doing things that pleased other people. Think about some of those parables and who he was speaking to. All of his examples are getting at that message. It's setting people free from not people meeting other people's expectations or perhaps their own and trying to help them to be set free so that they could see who they are in God's eyes as a beloved child of God right from the start. We just get distracted as children from that vision early on. And many of us spend years trying to clear the lenses of our hearts and minds from that judgment, do we not? Yeah, all of us do, I think. And we are trying to see who we are in God's eyes. How are you doing with that? Think about it. In the words of St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, which I've read a couple of times recently, we hear the words, love is patient and love is kind. Love never fails. And it's calling to us to experience that love and grace in our own lives, so that as we experience it, we can then turn around and share it with others. And so I invite you into that concept and that invitation as we begin our new chapter here together as the Groton Congregational Church. All right, so I've been pondering this now for a couple of weeks. To guide us as we go forward, I'd like to do one piece with all of you that is grounded in Jesus' message of forgiveness, which is part of the bulletin, you know, our, our language we've used, but it's also going to be part of our communion service. Jesus' message on forgiveness and his ability and call to all of us to step into the new life because of the love. 
It's one that I share frequently during Holy Week, but I think it will be really helpful for us today as this congregation, as we walk together into the fall, hoping that we can regenerate and refresh, what's the words, renew, renew one another, and see what we can do together. And so I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, that for those of you who can stand up, if you would please do so. And I'm going to now ask you to imagine that you are being called to take a step of faith into the unknown. There's a couple ways that I'm going to do this, because as an interim pastor, I have to many times, after each church, the church has joyously welcomed their new pastor, and I have to take that step myself. Many times I know where I'm going to go to next, but many times I have to take that step into the unknown, having no idea where I'm going to go or what I'm going to do. I finished at the church in Chester, and I was at home, and somebody called me and said, would you be willing to consider the church in Raleigh, Massachusetts? And I had said, where's Raleigh? (laughs) Okay, and so I was like, okay. So I packed things up, and I went. But fortunately, they had a parsonage, so I didn't have to look for housing. But I have to have that trust of walking into the unknown. So guess what? I'm going to ask you to go into that thinking with me. All right? One way for me to do this is to think about the call that Jesus has on forgiveness. This is a really important part of our faith journey. And I hope that this will resonate with you because when Jesus is calling to us to go in through forgiveness, it is really into the unknown with Jesus. So I hope you hear that part. But consider if you have been in an argument with somebody for a while or maybe carrying a hurt that hinders you, that it's not only you as an individual, but also we collectively as a congregation. Okay, so I'm going to give you that really strong image right now, and so I'm preparing you that you are there in the position with Jesus, as he is on on Good Friday, with your arms out in that incredible agony. But because you know that God is speaking to you in the midst of it, that you have got to let go of that agony and that disappointment and that anger and that whatever it is that Jesus has to go through, and he has to look down to the people who have put the nails in, in his hands and feet and say, Father, forgive them. Okay, he says, Father, forgive them. And it's not for their sake that he says those words. Jesus knows that in order for him to go into the new life, he has to set himself free. So when he says, Father, forgive them, what he is doing is he's leaving, he's letting go of his anger, his disappointment, and he's choosing love for the people who have harmed him because they cannot see what they are doing. And so he is setting himself free so that he is now free to go into the new life. And so I invite you to pause for a moment where you are and close your eyes if you would like to, to just think about, is there someone in your own life who has hurt your feelings or made you angry? And you are being invited right now to pause and say, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Lord, I want to be free to walk with you in love. Help me to do the forgiveness peace so that I can be your servant of compassion and love, and see what the new life will be like. Lord, hear our prayer, and I invite you now to be seated. This is probably one of the most important experiences that I ever had in my life when I went through Good Friday service and heard those words and understood the invitation for me. And so I offer it to you, and I pause to allow you to take in your breath.
as we let go of that harm, all of a sudden we unstuff our ears, believe it or not, in the ears of our heart to hear the invitation of God's voice this new day. This is an incredibly important choice that we can make. And as we have done this personally and individually, we need to also do it as a congregation, right? Right? Right. That whatever has happened in the past has shaped us and it has defined us. But the invitation today is to not let it limit us to that experience, that pain, the words that were in that covenant of intentionality are very clearly written to call us to, to name and, ex, and experience that, but then move forward and not let it stop us. And so I felt that this was a really important experience for us to have today in 20, on September 2022, so that as we go into the fall and hopefully as we go into this Christmas celebration and beyond, we will have a sense of the newness of who we are today on September 18th. Because we come here as a new combination, some with the same old experiences, but some are here. We've got a new combination of personalities, gifts, talents, experiences, hopes, and visions. Do we not? We are all wanting to nurture and share one another's stories and experiences because collectively then we become a diverse congregation. Somebody posted last night, think about what, how you look in a kaleidoscope. In a kaleidoscope you've got many broken pieces of color and you can twist them around to make different shapes and sometimes they make the most incredible shapes, do they not? But they're broken pieces, they're not just one piece. And I was holding up the picture of the Liberty Bell the other day, which has a crack in it at the meetings. The Liberty Bell is uh, justice, love and justice for all, not just for some, but it's got the crack in it to remind us that even though it's broken, it's got a really strong message. And so here we are all coming from our different stories and our different paths to walk together and see what we can create together. And I'm kind of excited. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. We had a really good meeting on Monday night, and I'm really, really excited about what happened. And so here we are, all wanting to share from who we are, but to do so, there is a call into experiencing some of what the trees are doing, right, will soon be doing, and shedding their leaves. Letting go of all of that in the past, which needs to be let go of. We can't forget what has happened, but we can relax the hold that it has on us so that we can create the space, the new space for the new life to grow and let the spirit come in and lead us and hopefully with some new voices coming in to, to be with us and walk with us. Are you with me? Okay. And so I'm going to go back to that first story that I shared. You know, where this young girl is climbing up the rocks and if she slips, she falls and she bounces. Okay, she bounces. She doesn't get hurt. Let's see how far we can climb and maybe we can get to the top and see a new vision that we've not seen before. And let's not be afraid to try some new things. And trust that the gift of God's grace is right there waiting for us to receive us and bless us as we go forward and try again with perhaps a little bit more wisdom, maybe a little bit of a hurt, but let's go forward and let love lead us and not just our stubborn egos, okay? I'm good at being stubborn, but I also know I want to let love lead and not fear. And so may God's grace and love pour upon us all now as we go forward to serve and laugh and bump and fall 
and rise again and laugh into the new. May God bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, and so now let us join together in that beautiful hymn. Let us break bread together as we prepare for the sacrament of communion. I invite you now to turn to the insert, which has the Sacrament of Communion on it. And I apologize, I went to make copies of this with color-coded parts for you as the congregation. I have learned that congregations truly love to participate. And so I'm going to invite you into your parts each time. I apologize, okay? And so let us now come to the table Oh, all of us welcome. We invite God to be part of us, all of us breaking bread together. We prepare to remember Jesus, all of us touched by the spirit of truth. We hope to be empowered by our feast, all of us with hearts burning inside like the flame of Pentecost. As the seed which was scattered to all corners of the field comes together to make bread on our table, so God's people gather from all corners of the world to share the great banquet of all thankfulness and hope. And please join with me. At God's table, there are no divisions. At God's table, all are welcome to share in the bounty of abundant life. Here at God's table, we join with all who seek to follow the way and follow the voice of love. Here we taste the grace eternal. Here we know that the God is good. And so the spirit of the living God be with you all. And also with you. In this season, when we enjoy the harvest from last fall, we, pray, we pause to give thanks to God. It is a good thing to give thanks for all God has given us. God of growth, God of harvest, God of gifts. Here we pause to give thanks for the abundance of our lives. And please join me. For the fruit of the earth, for the food on our tables, for the love of our sisters and brothers in faith around the world, for the promise of hope in a world given to despair, for the possibility of peace in a world torn apart by violence, for these and many other things, we offer our thanks and praise. And please join me with this part. We remember the stories of our forefathers and mothers in faith, people like Sarah and Abraham, Miriam and Moses, Peter and Mary, 
prophets and leaders, and all who have proclaimed your hope over the centuries, we lift up the countless saints who have gone before us to teach about the possibilities of being your people. And now, in the middle of our thankfulness, we give special thanks for a man from Nazareth, Jesus, the one we call Christ, child of Mary and child of grace. He came to teach about the wonders of your love. He came to break down the walls of division among your people. And as he ate with the misunderstood and the least of his world, he showed us what the glorious banquet of life could be like. And please join. We give thanks for his witness and commitment to the way. We give thanks for his healing of broken spirits and broken bodies. We give thanks for his life, his death, and his resurrection. Here now, as we gather at the table to which Jesus calls us, we remember another table long ago and far away. At that table, Jesus gathered with friends to tell again the ancient story of liberation from bondage. And then at the end of the meal, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he passed it among them saying, this is my body which is being broken for all. Take and eat. And whenever you eat of it, remember what I have taught. And then he took the cup of good wine and he blessed it and passed it to them saying, this is the seal of the new covenant Take and drink and remember. And please join with me. And so, God of the cross, the empty tomb, and the banquet, we eat and drink and remember, giving thanks for the love Jesus poured out on all he met, Jew and Gentile, sinner and saint, healthy and broken. And in our remembering, we state the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, God, you call us to sing the songs of faith in places both familiar and strange. You call us to share the banquet of faith with longtime friends and new acquaintances. Pour out your spirit on this table and these people. As we eat and drink, may we feel the wind of the spirit in our hair, the fire of the spirit in our bellies, and the love of the spirit in our hearts. May the presence of the Spirit make this meal an occasion of transformation for we who gather to eat it together. God of the banquet that is and is to come, on this day we gather with people all around the world to share this meal. And please join with me. Creator, our source of love, Christ, love incarnate, Spirit, love's flowing power, praise, now and forever. Amen. And so the bread we break is the bread of life. The cup we share is the cup of love. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And so I will invite you to come and eat, although we will be sharing it, <laughs> for the banquet awaits. And so through the broken bread, we are invited to participate in the body of Christ and ministering to you in Christ's name. It is with joy that I offer you this bread.
And friends, let us share the bread of life. And through the cup of blessing, we are invited to participate in the new life that Christ brings. The past is gone. Today is a brand new day. Ministering to you in Christ's name, it is with joy that I offer you this cup. Do you want to come around front? Yeah. And now let us share the cup of blessing. And please join with me now in the unison prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, O God, because in your own free gift of love, you have reached out to us, you have refreshed us at your table, touched our deepest needs, and called us to a life shared in memory and hope. Send us forth with courage and joy in the name of Jesus Christ, 
so that we too may become bread and peace for one another and the world. Bless us now as we give thanks for this meal and go renewed out into the world to share your profound love. Amen. And now let us close with a beautiful hymn, God of the Ages, whose mighty hand, number 725. Now, let us go forward out into the world, renewed and refreshed and ready to share our, the ministry. May God bless us and keep us. May God's love pour upon us so that we can share that love with some energy and grace. Amen.